Welcome back to the Morning Noon Night Show here on Plum TV. I'm now joined by island photographer Nicole Friedler, who's here to talk to us about photography. Hello, Nicole. How are you? Hello, Guinevere. I have to um, correct one thing. Okay. That wedding in Boston yes. was not a shotgun wedding. <gasps> Where is John's integrity I, as a journalist? You know, I, I don't know, but it kind of goes into, actually, um, we were talking about trends yes. earlier in photography. I'm seeing that a lot of couples who are getting married now are older. Really? It used to be when I started my business eight years ago, I was doing a lot of weddings of people who were, um, you know, in their early to mid 20s right. and maybe later 20s. And now I'm finding that a lot more people are later 20s, early 30s, mid 30s. Really? And this couple in Boston, they were both 39 and they had met and then they did things a little bit backwards. And, you know, she's five months pregnant and. They got married the week before the actual wedding. So, Wait, yeah. so it is a shotgun wedding? <laughs> no. No, I guess no, it doesn't have that same... No, no it wasn't like, oh, no, we're pregnant, image. we have to... Yeah. Right, okay. They were getting married anyway. Yeah. Right, okay. So we see. So things have changed. Now, have since the ages have changed with a lot of couples getting married, how has that impacted your, the photography end? Do you find that it's easier, more difficult? You know, it's probably easier because I think people um, have more of an idea of what they want. And I find that my clients, the clients who come to me, um, are usually pretty laid back okay. about how they're approaching their wedding and what they want. And, of course, there's always an amount of stress around a wedding. Um, but it's interesting because people come to me and they'll say, oh, we don't want pose pictures. We want right. to be a lot more kind of relaxed. And when people say that to me, I do kind of stress that even though they think they don't want the posed photographs, it's kind of important. It's because, so important. Yeah, if you don't have a picture of Grandma with Aunt Sally and your mom and your dad and... You can hear about it for the rest of your oh, forget married it. life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you and know? I hear those stories all the time. Like, our photographer didn't get a picture of blah, blah, blah. So... Uh, well, now, how do people go about, you think, selecting the photographer for their wedding? You know, I wish I knew. No. Um. <laughs> well, clearly, people select you because for eight years, that's a, that's a pretty good success rate. Yeah. Well, I guess um, you know what I suggest to people, and even when people come to interview me, mm -hmm. um, you know, to talk to me about photographing their wedding, I'll tell them that the most important thing is that you respond to the work and that you right. really, you know, whatever you're looking for. I can't tell somebody what they're looking for in their wedding photographs. Right. So if you respond to the work. Um, you know, maybe pick two or three people you want to speak with, then meet with them and see if you have a rapport right. with the photographer because of all the vendors that you deal with at your wedding, as you know. Oh, yes. Yes, because you've You're been like married. This. Yeah. You hang out with the photographer all day. You do. And it's not just all day because you have a relationship beforehand, and then at least I do with my clients, no, and then after, to. and, you know, and it could go on for a good year or two or three, depending on when the client decides to finally make their wedding album. Right, Joanne. But do you have a philosophy um, that you sort of stand by when you're taking photos with people or that you share with people? Well, I mean, philosophy? it's one of the things that I, I try and do is be as flexible as possible mm -hmm. and just, you know, Anytime you're in a wedding situation, you're in the actual event, and I tell this to my couples, you can make every plan you want. You can sit, you can plan it down to the exact second, and I look at them before and I say, just so you know, things are going to happen. Right. You know, and you can make all the best plans, but life has a way of kind of changing things. Absolutely. For you. Yeah. There's always that X factor. Exactly. Whatever that X factor yeah. could be. <laughs> the mother-in-law. Oh, you know, the mother-in-law, the mother, the caterer, the... Weather. The, the best friend. The weather. Drinks too much. What's up with oh? <laughs> we try, we don't photograph that friend. The weather. No. Do you, have you had? Actually, yes, we do. I think that you have to. But have they never that. end up in the album. No, but they're in sort of like the you know what do you call it the proofs. Yeah. 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 They're the blackmail photographs. Exactly. Yeah. Do you remember my wedding when you did this? Let's, I really don't want to wear that dress for your wedding. <laughs> this will become public. No, but um, do you have any sort of like special moments or like really embarrassing moments that you always sort of stick out in your mind through the years that are like your favorites? Like what's the most embarrassing moment you've seen? Or the funniest moment? The funniest moment. America's funniest photograph. Yeah, you know, it's, the thing is, like I approach everything as funny. I mean, okay. that's probably not the best thing, but sense of spirit, sense of humor, right. sense of style. If you don't have laughter, what do you have? Exactly. Right. <laughs> what is life about? I don't know. And you know what? Basically, everything is funny. <laughs> John standing there with his shirt untucked is funny. <laughs> I'm only people could see no, behind camera. I know. But, um, no, but, well, I, funny, kind of shocking, there's a photograph that I'm known for, and it's of a couple jumping off a dock into the water. 
And the bride told me beforehand, she said, you know what, we're jumping off. And I bought this $175 dress off the rack because I know that we're going to jump. Right. Right. So to this day, people are like, did they really jump? <laughs> and I'm thinking, how did I do that if they didn't right. jump? You know? I wouldn't, I don't. The other thing is, I don't like staging things. Right. Like, I like photographing as things happen. So well, you capture the true essence of the event. Well, exactly. And the person. Or you try. Yeah. And you know, I think it's it's actually it's the same thing. Like if it's windy out. Right. You know, people will be like, oh, my hair's in my face, and I, you know, I just look at them and I'm like, yeah. hey, guess what? It's real life. And right. Photoshop is a good friend. Right. But yeah. you know, it's so beautiful. Some of the photos where the women, you know, do have their hair sort of blowing because you can say you can go, sort of get a feel for the day and for the wedding and what well, have you. Know, yeah. Actually, I was just explaining this to a client the other day that some of the most beautiful photographs are actually of people's backs. I. I agree. The couple's backs are, you know, mm -hmm. and they're the kind of unscripted, unposed moments when people are just being themselves. And, and it's so, almost more intimate. Right. And so when, peop when I do a portrait mm -hmm. um, at a wedding, I'm probably the biggest goofball you've ever seen because I'm telling them jokes and I'm just right. trying to get them you to relax. At ease. Yeah, I try. So I guess the big lesson is for brides and grooms is just sort of to go with the flow and realize that you can do so much planning but things are going to happen. And the, exactly. The more you're at ease with things happening, the right. better your photos are going to be. Right. And, you know, I mean, I, I think I do a pretty good job at helping people out with that. I could see that. Yeah. If I got married on the island, Nicole, I would have gotten you to do my pictures. Oh, thank you so much. That's, That's an endorsement. Now, do you like to photograph in black and white or color? What's your preference? Well, now that I'm shooting digitally, um, you have the option to do it any way you want. Yeah, you can just switch and you go to sepia. I mean, you can mm -hmm. really get but crazy. But I basically now I photograph everything. It looks color to me while mm -hmm. I'm photographing, and then I switch it afterwards. That's awesome. Is yeah. the technology amazing? It's a little daunting, actually. It is amazing, <laughs> but there's so much that you know to know. Got to keep up with the time. You got to keep up. Now, here's a question. So we know that you do amazing wedding photos. Now, is, is there any other type of photography that you specialize in? Family portraits. Okay. Um, and it's actually it's very nice because now a lot of my wedding clients are having babies. Oh. So they're calling. I have three clients coming back this summer, and they want their family portrait. And oh, that's so nice. Yeah, no, it's great. But you know, family portraits are also just kind of wonderful things and I think I got um, interested in photography at the very beginning because I used to love looking at our family photo albums. Oh, that's kind of sweet. Yeah, and I would sit there and look at them forever and I think that that's what drew me to wanting to create that for other people. You know, and with the portraits, it's the same thing. It's like I want families to be in their most familiar state, which do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, just the way they are. Right. You know. Um, so you don't, do you support sort of like the outfits matching, or do you like people to sort of be a little more natural and less prepared? Get, well, they always, you know, people always ask, what should I wear? I say, don't wear white, as you know, because white, right. when you're on camera, it's going to, you know, all you're going to look at when you see the image is the white and not the face. And, right, absolutely. And in terms of people matching, I say, you know what, do whatever you feel most right. comfortable with, you know, but don't have, you know, little Bobby and orange and green stripes and, you know, Mommy and I don't know. No, I have to tell you, I had my chartreuse. My husband's father uh, did a family portrait with his wife and children, and they all had a different pattern on, and that was their Christmas card. Yeah. And it was so dizzying. Yeah. And horrible. I was like, yeah. did anyone look in the mirror before they left? Yeah. So that, and I love Lily Pulitzer. Let me tell you, I love Lily Pulitzer, right. but the family portrait with four children and four different li Lily prints. Yeah, that's a little much. Yeah, it's a little blinding. I kind of like when they do a little matchy. You know, the guy. Well, the matchy is okay. Yeah, the matchy is okay, but as long as the matchy is coordinated, right. then you're fine. So see, another lesson learned here on Plum TV. Don't do too many patterns when doing a family portrait. Right. And now, you can match if you want, but, you know, I, there are a lot of people, and you see a lot of family portraits where everybody's in, you know, khaki pants and white shirts. And right. I always kind of go, why? Right. But well, now where do people sort of like to get their photos taken on the island? Because I see that this is a huge place for family portraits. Well, what I tell people when I talk to them is, you know, first of all, I ask them if they have a history, like a history on the vineyard mm -hmm. or are there very, you know, special places to them, places.